my happy book. Christmas Who by Spongebob Squarepants Hold on to your candy cane! Did you know there was a time when no one in Bikini Bottom had ever heard of Christmas? But that all changed the day I spied Sandy stringing colored lights on the tree in her tree dome. Suddenly the tree lit up. I thought it was on fire. I charged into the tree dome with a pail of seawater. No, Spongebob! She shouted. Haven't you ever seen a Christmas tree before? Christmas who? I asked her confused. You never heard of Christmas? She cried. Then Sandy sat me down and told me the magical tale of Christmas. I heard about gumdrops and penny whistles. I heard about fruitcake and toy making elves. And best of all, I heard about the one they call Santa Claus. Sandy said you can write letters to this guy, tell him what you want, and he'll bring you whatever you ask for. I ran up and told all my friends. We wrote letters to Santa. I wish that Santa would visit the gentle folk in Bikini Bottom. Everyone wrote a letter except Squidward. Ugh, what a party pooper. I quickly invented a machine that would fire our letters to the water's surface. It worked. We decorated Christmas trees and sent out Christmas cards. Then we sang songs all night and awaited Santa's arrival. But what a letdown! Santa didn't show up! Everyone got mad and left! Even Patrick! I was so sad, but right in the midst of my grief, I heard a sound! A magical sound! It was faint at first, and then it grew louder! It sounded like laughter! Ho ho ho! It was laughter! Oh, Santa Claus! There he was, all jolly and bearded! His belly was small, but his nose was huge with Christmas joy. My wish had come true, and he gave us all presents. I couldn't stop sobbing tears of happiness. <laughs> that was the greatest first Christmas of my whole life. <clears throat> the Graveyard Shift by Spongebob, I love my work, Squarepants. The Krusty Krab had just closed, and it was time to go home. The saddest time of the day. Just then, a straggler walked up to the door. You want my money or not? He asked. Mr. Krabs couldn't resist. In a burst of inspiration, he declared, The Krusty Krab will now be open 24 hours a day. We were going to be open forever! This had to be the happiest news of my life! I got to do everything I normally do at night! I got to work in the kitchen at night! I got to chop lettuce at night! I even got to swab the bathroom at night! Ow! I got to burn my hand at night! It was the greatest! I was the happiest employee ever! At night. Then Squidward told me the story of the Hassling and Slasher. Ten years ago at this very restaurant, the Hassling and Slasher used to be a fry cook. One night he cut his own hand off by mistake and replaced it with a rusty spatula. And then he got hit by a bus. So now his ghost returns to the Krusty Krab to wreak his horrible revenge. First the lights will flicker, and then he'll arrive in the ghostly bus that ran him over. Suddenly the lights started to flicker, and across the road from the Krusty Krab we saw a ghostly person get off a bus. But buses in Bikini Bottom don't run at night. Squidward and I grabbed hold of one another as the ghostly person approached. Turns out he wasn't the hassling and slasher. It was just a guy who wanted to apply for a job. But it never did explain who flickered the lights. Boy, that was the happiest night shift of my life. The Algae's Always Greener by SpongeBob Co-Cashier SquarePants. 
One Tuesday, Plankton invented an I wish I could switch lives with Mr. Krabs machine. As soon as he activated it, he magically had Mr. Krabs' life and Mr. Krabs had his. Plankton dressed like Mr. Krabs and owned the Krusty Krab. The next day, I asked Mr. Plankton for my weekly performance review. He gave me a promotion. I had never known such happiness. I was co-cashier. But no sooner had this happened than the now evil Mr. Krabs busted into the restaurant to steal the Krabby Patty recipe. And to make matters worse, he was stark raving naked. I did what any co-cashier would have done. RED ALERT! TAKE COVER! I shouted into my megaphone. I quickly engaged my trusty cannon. I fired clothes at the naked bandit. Mr. Krabs cleverly dodged flying socks, gowns, shorts, culottes, and trousers. Then, blammo! I finally dressed him. But poor Mr. Plankton, the pressure of being a businessman and father and having to ward off the evil Mr. Krabs every day for the rest of his life really got to him. Before he cracked up, he switched himself back to regular Plankton. As for me, I will always remember that special day and what it felt like to be co-cashier. Cha-ching! The Tale of Squidward's First Bite by Spongebob Squarepants Once upon a really weird time, I, Spongebob Squarepants, found out that Squidward had never had a Krabby Patty. Never? I thought, never ever? How could it be? The truth was so ugly that I cried in my teacup and drank all my tears, but Squidward seemed convinced that he would never ever even try one. When I tried to offer him a delicious patty, he slapped it aside. Get that garbage out of my face, he yelled. Then it hit me. I had a mission. I had to get school to try a Krabby Patty. So I followed him everywhere with a Krabby Patty. I followed him into the bathroom. I popped out of the cash register. Wherever school went, I went with a Krabby Patty in hand. I vowed to keep trying until he agreed to take just one bite of the scrumptious del delicacy. Finally, good old Squiddy saw the writing on the wall and he and said he'd do it. Slowly, he lifted the Krabby Patty to his mouth and took a teeny weeny bite. I clasped my hands for joy when I saw a smile stretch across his miserable face. Victory! But his smile quickly turned into a frown. Squidward said he hated the Krabby Patty. I hung my head in despair. It just didn't make any sense. The Krabby Patty is an absolute good. No one's immune to its tasty charms, except apparently Squidward. He threw the rest of the Krabby Patty on the ground and buried it in the sand. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was awful. Everyone knows that an uneaten Krabby Patty deserves a proper burial. Then one morning when I got to work at my usual 3 a.m. time, I found Squidward inside the Krusty Krab vault, inside the Krabby Patty vault. He jumped when he saw me. What are you doing here? I asked. And why is the vault open? And why are you holding a Krabby Patty behind your back? And why are you acting so nervous? And why are you sweating so much? And why do you look so hungry? Then I got it. Squidward liked Krabby Patties. This was hands down one of the happiest moments in my life, and Squidward's. And best of all, after all that eating, there was more of Squidward to love. And finally, No Weenies Allowed by Spongebob Tough Pants. 
if there's one thing I'm not, it's a weenie. This whole weenie thing started when Sandy and I tried to get into the Salty Spittoon. The Salty Spittoon is the roughest, toughest sailor hangout ever built under the seven seas. Anyway, the guy at the door let Sandy right in after she ripped off his tattoo and put it back on upside down. But the guy at the door wouldn't let me in. He said he thought I'd be more comfortable at Weenie Hut Juniors. Just because I didn't have nails for breakfast doesn't mean I have to eat at Weenie Hut Juniors. That's it. It was time to prove that I was not a weenie. I tried fast talk. It didn't work. I got a tough hairdo. It didn't work. Then I faked a fight with Patrick. Wow, that Patrick sure was a good actor. He beat himself to a pulp. And just like that, I got into the salty spittoon. I'm not sure I ever recall being so happy. Then upon gaining entrance to this prestigious so social club, I slept on an ice cube and got covered in boo-boos all over my body. And you know what's worse? I got sent back to Weenie Hut Juniors. Well, at least no one can actually rob me of the joy of actually entering the Celtics platoon. It was one of the happiest moments of my wee- I, I mean, tough life. The end.